Let's give the Lord the best clap offering for this morning. Are you guys excited for this morning? Hallelujah. Congratulations. Uh, it was fun. Last Sunday, right? It was fun. It was tiring, but it was fun. Uh, of course, I would like to give all the credit and all the glory and praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's give Him the best clap offering for this morning. <laughs> to all my teammates, to all the team players, from those who manage the parking area, hanggang sa nagtadtad ng litsyon, hanggang sa mga worship team natin na may pakending-kending pa, hanggang sa mga nagalaga sa bata, nasaksakan ng daming bata, hanggang sa mga nagsilbi doon sa kainan, at uh, sa lahat ng tao na walang kapagduran na Sabado pa lamang nandito na, eh, pagpalain kayo ng Diyos. At nawa ay nasihan kayo sa paggamit ng inyong serbisyo as a form of worship to our dear Lord. Amen? Amen. Good morning, good morning. For uh, this morning, we will talk about facing your giants. Look at the person next to you. Tell the person next to you. Facing your giants. What are the learning to ponder about is that Number one, the size of your giant is always enormous. Number two, life's problems are fearsome hurdles. Number three, you have the DNA of God. Number four, wherever we are right now is actually a training ground. Number five, Life of obedience is rewarding. Number six, expect discouragement. Again, I will say it again. Expect discouragement. Number seven, he will give you strength. Remember that the battles, that the battle is the Lord's. And number eight, we are victors in Christ. Game kanaba. Are you ready? Thank you, Tita Fe, for that wonderful story uh, of, about David and Goliath. But actually, the entire chapter 17 is all about the battle of David versus Goliath. And let's look back what happened from verse 1 you know, until the end of chapter 17. And it's a battle between David and Goliath that we are all familiar with. In verse 1, it says, the Philistines gathered their forces for war at Soko and Judah and camped between Azekah and Ephes Damim. Verse 2, Saul and the men of Israel gathered and camped in the valley of Elah. Then they lined up in formation to face the Philistines. Sa madaling salita, eh, labanan to. Gera. Alam nyo, in verse 3, sabi dito, the Philistines were standing on one hill and the Israelites were standing on another hill with a ravine between them. Then a champion named Goliath from Gath came out from the Philistine camp. Bigla bigla na lamang may lumabas na he was nine feet and nine inches tall. Nine feet and nine inches tall. And wore a bronze helmet. Pwede kaya itong pang motor? 
And he also wore a bronze scale armor that weighed 125 pounds. Imagine that. Wearing full bronze armor weighing 125 pounds as if you are may sinasalabay kang isang Pilipino na average weight. Right? Siguro kasi bigat ni Manny Pacquiao nung kanyang prime. And he's like nine feet and six feet tall. Nine feet and nine inches tall. Nine feet and nine inches tall. My goodness. No? Kung sa NBA to, alam nyo, ang, 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 ang height, the height of the rim, yung ring, is 10 feet. So he's 9'9", nine, 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 right? He's 9'9". Nine, nine. So, pag dinag niya yung bola, so can you imagine how tall Goliath is? Sa Pilipinas, ang tawag natin dito, Goliath. Diba? Si Goliath. So there was a bronze armor on his shins. Not only on his helmet, but on his shins. And a bronze javelin was slung between his shoulders. I don't know what is the obsession of Goliath with bronze. Kaya hindi siya nag-gold medal eh. Bronze medal is lang siguro siya. Right? A bronze javelin was slung between his shoulders. His spear shaft was like a weaver's beam. And the iron point of his spear weighed 15 pounds. So yung kanyang uh, sword ay 15 pounds. In addition, a shield bearer was walking in front of him. May bit-bit pa ng kanyang shield. So, paano mo ba naman tatalunin tong tao na to? Right? Learning to ponder, number one. Remember this. The size of your giant will always be enormous. Malaki. Huge. That is why it is called a giant. Pastor, what are the giants? You see, giants might seem to suddenly appear from the middle of nowhere at the time you are at least expecting them to. A giant is not necessarily a Goliath in our life, but Goliath is a representation of the problems that we are facing in life. Some of the giants we face every day are pride, Selfishness, greed, probably addiction, alcoholism, addiction to nicotine or drugs, addiction to pornography, anxiety, depression, fear because of pandemic, financial debts, max out credit cards, marriage, divorce, adultery, unwanted relationship. Work, fatigue, overwork. How about injustice? How about the fear of health deterioration? This pandemic, diseases, grief, family, loneliness. These are some, some, some of the giants that we can possibly face every day. And it's a good reminder that expect it. That's why it's called giant. It will always be enormous. Let's continue. In verse 8, he stood and shouted to the Israelite battle formations. <laughs> why do you come out to line up in battle formation? He asked them, Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? He even called King Saul as king, but just Saul. Parang sinabi mo, tinawag mo yung tatay mo in first name. Sabi niya, here's the challenge. No, choose one of your young, choose one of your men. 
and have him come down against me. Pumili kayo ng isa, pababain nyo dito, at magwa-one on one kami. <laughs> Basketball lang, hindi ko ito kakayanan eh. Nine eh. Patayan pa kaya. And if he wins, sabi ni Gulayat, if he wins in a fight against me and kills me, we will be your servants. With all rudeness, napaka-boastful. But if, but if I win against him and kill him, then you will be our servants and serve us. Then Christine said, I defy the ranks of Israel today. Send me a man so we can fight each other. Ibigay niyo sa akin ang best of the best niyo and then let's see. Pag napatay niya ako, slaves niyo. Pero pag napatay slaves namin ang buong Israel. When Saul and all Israel heard these words from the Philistine, which is Goliath, they lost their courage and they were all terrified. They were so terrified. Learning to point number two. Aside from the size of our giant will always be enormous, we need to understand that life's problems are fearsome hurdles. Are you familiar with hurdles? Last Olympics, di ba? Merong hurdles na sa may uh, a marathon, uh, no, 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 uh, sprint, sprint hurdles. So these are hurdles that will uh, serve as a barrier as you run along life's winding pathway. You see, it will always be a fearsome hurdles. Ano ibig sabihin nito, Pastor? Some of the biggest giants that we will have to face are the giants from within and not from without. You see, the fear that we are experiencing are the giants from within. That is more a problem from the, compared to the giants from without. Because Goliath is a giant from without. You see, the, 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 more, prob- the more problematic na pwedeng tumama sa atin ay yung hindi... Yung giant from without, but the giant from within us. Because fear can paralyze us. You see, fear is, 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 it is normal. But it becomes abnormal if you allow fear to stay within you. In verse 12, now David, ito na yung natin, was the son of the Ephrathite from Bethlehem. Are you familiar with Bethlehem? Where Jesus was born? Bethlehem of what? Judah. Are you familiar of, uh, with Judah? Judah, the tribe of Judah. That's why Jesus is called the Lion of Judah. His name was Jesse, a lolo ni Jesus. Jesse had eight sons. Walo ang anak ni Jesse. Puro lalaki. And during Saul's reign was already an old man. Matanda na si Jesse. Well, before this chapter, there was an anointing that, no, that uh, happened. The Lord told Samuel to go to the house of Jesse and anoint the future king of Israel. Because I, I don't like Saul. Saul is, you know, he started good but, ah, he's so proud. So I want you to anoint the best son of Jesse. Sabi dito, may walong anak si Jesse. So, pinaline up yung pito. Puro pogi, magandang lalaki, matapang, matipuno, pwedeng sundalo, pwedeng leader, matatalino, cream of the crop. The problem is, ito yung pangana, isa Eliab, sabi ni Jesse, is he the one? No. Pangalawa, is he the one? No. Pangatlo, pangapat, panglima, panganim, pangpito. No. Kala ko ba anak ko yung magiging future king na ano po? And then Samuel asked him, Is there any other else? Son of yours? Oh, nalimutan ko. There was this, Bunso, si Bunso! Nasa field! Yung bata, 
Pakitawag. Here's the thing. Sabi ni Samuel, nobody sit until the future king comes. Di pa king, respected na, right? So this scenario happened before the David and Goliath scenario. So they all knew that David will be the future king of Israel. Jesse knew about it. The, the other seven brothers knew about it. Probably the, the people who surround him that became witnesses knew about this. Learning to ponder. You have the DNA of God. You see, David is very important to God. Why? Because he knows that David is a man after God's own heart. He knows that David will be the future Lolo of Jesus Christ. From the descendant of David will, be, will come the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You see, if only God will allow himself to be bled out today, and we will check his DNA, and compared to your blood, it is the same. Because you are the sons and daughters of God. Amen? Your DNA and God's DNA are the same. Same thing with David. In verse 13, Jesse, Jesse's three oldest sons, had followed Saul to the war. And their names were Eliab, the firstborn, Abinadab, the next, and Shama, the third. So yung tatlong anak ni Saul ay naging mga sundalo. In verse 14, and David was the youngest. The three elders had followed Saul, but David kept going back and forth from Saul to tend his father's flock in Bethlehem. Wait, I thought he'll be the future king. Bakit parang errand boy pa rin? Every morning and evening, for 40 days, the Philistine came forward and took his stand. Imagine, every day, tinatawan ka ni Goliath, Every day, umaga, gabi, for 40 days. No? One day, Jesse had told his son David, take this half bush of roasted grain, along with these ten loaves and bread of your brothers, and hurry to your camp. In verse 18, also, there this, tea, there this ten portions of cheese to the field commander. Check on the well-being of your brother and bring a confirmation from them. No, dalin mo rin tong sampung portion ng keso doon sa field commander nila. No? At paki-check mo yung mga kapatid mo kung okay pa sila at bigyan mo ako ng confirmation. Verse 19, They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. David, the future king, still the errand boy. What a humility, right? Anointed ka na? Right? Imagine the, 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 the scenario in simple politics. If you are the son or, 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 or a daughter of a famous politician, you don't have to do anything in life. Just wait for your turn. Mamanahin mo na. Right? Right? Sa probinsya, pag ang tatay mo mayor, Malamang-lamang, pag nasa tamang edad ka na, mayor ka na. Right? Why? Because you are in succession. David is already in succession, but with all humility, nagtatrabaho pa rin siya. Mahal niya pa rin yung tatay niya. He still respects his father. Pag inutusan siya, errand boy. Papunta doon sa battlefield, pabalik, taga-bit-bit, taga-deliver, ng pagkain. Verse 20. So David got up early in the morning, left the flock with someone to keep it. Iniwan niyo muna yung flock niya, yung sheep niya. Sabi niya, pakibantayan niyo naman to. Loaded up and set out as Jesse had charged him. Excited si David, he arrived at the perimeter of the camp as the army was marching out to its battle formation, shouting their battle cry. Learning to ponder number four. Wherever we are right now, remember, it is a training ground. Wherever you are right now, it is a training ground. 
David never skipped the training ground from being a shepherd boy, an errand boy, to becoming a king. You see, David never reminded them that he is the future king. He kept on going, doing what he, do, he does best, and just, you know, plainly an errand boy and a shepherd boy. In verse 21, Israel and the Philistines line up in battle formation, facing each other. David left his supplies in the care of the quartermaster and ran to the battle line. Excited si David. Iniwan niyo muna yung pinadala ng tatay niya. When he arrived, he asked his brothers how they were. Kasi yun yung bilin ng tatay eh. Kamustahin mo yung mga kapatid mo. In verse 23, while he was speaking with them, suddenly the champion named Goliath, the Philistine from Gath, came forward from the Philistine battle line and shouted his usual words, which David now heard. Narinig na ni David. Imagine, this is something na araw-araw for 40 days and 40 nights na didinig ng kampo ng Israel, pero wala silang ginagawa. Takot silang lahat. Verse 24, All the Israelite men saw Goliath. They retreated from him, terrified. Let's go back to learning to ponder number two. Life's problems are fearsome hurdles. Imagine for 40 days, they are faced with this giant. And it's so, it's an experience of fear. So much fear. Imagine in this life, there are some people that have been in battle with so many giants in their lives that eventually they become so tired of fighting and they just give up. They gave up going to church. They gave up reading the Bible. They gave up praying. They gave up believing that God exists. But understand that the word is saying quitters don't win and winners don't quit. Right? Tell the person next to you, do not give up. Do not give up. Remember in Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So why give up? Why give up if, you're, if your Father in heaven is the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Let's go back to the story. 25. Previously, an Israelite man had declared, do you see this man who keeps coming out? He comes to defy Israel. The king will make the man who kills him very rich. And he will give him his daughter. So meron nag explain na kung saan may galing na tao na, alam mo ba, tao na to, pag may nakapatay dyan, ibibigay ng hari yung kayamanan niya at ibibigay yung kanyang anak. The king will also make the family of that man's father exempt from paying taxes in Israel. Wow, good deal. Lalo na kung nasa US ka, mahal ang tax dito eh. Right? Ito yung deal. Sabi ng lalaki, pag may nakapatay dyan, King Saul will make him not only rich, but very rich. But wait, there's more. No? He will give him his daughter, a beautiful princess, plus, plus, yung tatay mong si Jesse, he will be exempted from paying Says, isn't it a good deal? Life is full of mystery, right? Learning to ponder, number five. Life of obedience is rewarding. There will always be a reward in the end. If you will not give up. Giants, understand that in a verse 26 it says, David spoke to the men who were standing with him. Inausap ni David, yung mga lalaki, sabi niya, what will be done for the man who kills that Philistine and removes his disgrace from Israel? Just who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You see, the concern of David, his motivation is... It's not the reward of King Saul. It's not the beautiful princess. It's not the tax exemption. It's not, you know, be, will, he will be given the riches of this earth. His motivation is what? His motivation 
is to lift up the name and bring back the glory and bring back the honor and bring back the respect to the living God. Diba Matthew 6.33 kaagad sa David? Matthew 6.33 agad siya. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. You see, David's motivation is God. It is God, not the reward. He wants to restore the dignity and reverence to God. Let's go back to the story in verse 27. The troops told him about the offer, concluding that is what will be done for the man who kills him. David's oldest brother, Eliab, eto na, listened as he spoke to the men, and he became angry with him. Nagalit siya kay David, yung panganay, si Eliab. Sabi niya, why did you come down here? Hmm. He asked, Who did you leave those few sheep with in the wilderness? I know your arrogance and your evil heart. You came down to see the battle. Tagalogin natin yung sinabi ni Eliad. No? O bakit ka pumunta dito? Aber, aber, aber. Ha? Anong ginagawa mo dito? Ha? Imagine mo, kuya mo, pinagsasabihan ka. At kanino man man iniwan, yung mga kakaunti mo lang, kakaunti mo na lang ng mga tupa, konti na nga lang, iniwan mo pa sa wilderness. At alam kita, kilala kita, mayabang ka, mayabang ka, evil yung heart mo, nandito ka para mag-osyoso. Yun ang sabi ng kuya niya. Sumagot si David, verse 29. What have I done now? Ano ginawa ko? Ano nyari? protested by David. It was just a question. Nagtatanong lang ako. Then he ret- and then he turned from those beside him to others in front of him and asked about the offer. The people gave him the same answer as before. I'd like to talk to the youth. Youth, sabi sa 1 Timothy 4.12, don't, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Amen? But be an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Huwag mong hayaan na tingnan ka dahil ikaw ay bata. Ha? Bata lang yan. Ha? Bag- bagito pa yan. Wala pang alam yan. David, shepherd boy lang yan. Wala yan. Kami, mga malalaki, malalakas na kami dito. Matatagal na kaming army. Sino ba yan? The bottom line is envy. Right? Envious brothers because David they already knew that he will be the anointed king. So, if God set you in a pathway of success, people will try to hinder you. Amen? It's obvious. I'm sure, na experience na lahat yan. Expect discouragement. In this life, expect Discouragement. I remember 2018, I was invited by Pastor Berth. He called me up. Pastor, can you please preach in our church here in LA? I know that you are in Hiatus. So, I came here. Pastor Berth told me, Baka pwede mo kami tulungan dito. And I said to him, No. Thank you, Pastor, but no. In 2019, Pastor Bong called me up because uh, I think Pastor... Manny was in a, a sabbatical. And he asked me, Pastor, can you preach here? Every first month of the year, I, uh, natatawag ako dito para mag-preach. And then, yeah, of course. No? And then again, we talked. I talked to Pastor Bird, and, you know, and he said, oh, baka gusto mo naman consider I said, no, I don't think so. But in 2020, no, the Lord told me to keep my heart open in coming to L.A. But a month before the, the new year, it was December 24, 2019, I told a friend that I'm considering going to L.A. and a minister there. My friend told me, don't go to L.A. Don't go there. You will not be successful in L.A. And I was so discouraged. I was so discouraged. And uh, good thing, the Lord insisted that you listen to me 
do not listen of men. I decided to join in March 2020 after two weeks lockdown. I was so discouraged. How can I pastor a church? How can I, pa- how can I pastor a church? No, after knowing them just in two weeks, no, lockdown. Imagine. Then I remember that friend who told me that I won't be successful in LA, that he is true in his words. Ever, I was successful here in LA because Jesus was successful here in LA because we allowed him to be the senior pastor of this church. And look at what happened from March to August 2021. No, kahit bata, kayang basahin yan. Amen? And look at what happened last week. That is the graph that God made no, because He is in perfect control. So never, ever be discouraged. Obedience is the key. Never, ever lift up your name and take the glory because He deserves alone the glory. Amen? Can we give the best clap offering for God? Amen. Before, when I came here, I saw a wall of a church that is plain. Look at the, the, the figure no, doon sa taas. That is what I saw. But now, whenever I came here, no, tuwing darating ako dito, tuwing Sabado, Linggo, iba na yung nakikita ko. Because ito na yung ginawa ng Diyos, pininturahan niya na. And there's so much excitement whenever I came here. Because I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Balik tayo sa kwento. In verse 31, David said, was overheard and reported to Saul. Nadinig nila si, si David. And he had David brought to him. David said to Saul, Don't let anyone be discouraged by him. David said to Saul, Don't let anyone be discouraged by him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. David, the young shepherd boy who was discouraged by his older brothers, who was like ridiculed, now the discouraged person became the encourager of the king. You see the pattern? The discourage. Pero sabi niya, God called me. He went to the king. Wag mong hayaan, King Saul, na madiscourage ka. Hayaan mo na ang iyong lingkod, abang lingkod na lumaban sa kanya. In 33, but Saul replied, You can't go fight this Philistine. You, you're just a youth. Bata ka pa. And it's been a wire since he was young. Mm-hmm. Balikan natin. Number six, expect discouragement. Again. David came from discouragement from his brothers. And then he tried to lift him up himself and look unto God. And he went to King Saul. And he found himself again in a place of discouragement. Sabi ni King Saul, Nako, bata ka pa. For so many years, lagi ako nasasabihan yan, bata ka pa, wala ka pang magagawa. But again, like to encourage the youth, huwag niyong hayaan na tingnan kayo pababa. Pwede kayong tumingin pataas sa Panginoon. Walang bata at matanda sa paglilingkod sa Diyos. Amen? Alam nyo, in verse 34, as we go back to the story, David answered Saul, Your servant has been tending his father's sheep. Whenever a lion or a bear came and carried off a lamb from, a flo- from the flock, I went after it, struck it down, and rescued the lamb from its mouth. If it reared up against me, I would grab it by its fur and strike it down and kill it. Sabi niya, King Saul, sabi, King Saul, hindi mo naiintindihan eh. Praktisado kaya ako. Ang dami ko na napatay na leon, tsaka mga oso. Kasi tuwing atakihin nila yung flock ko, ha? ipaglalaban ko. Kasi ako yung shepherd eh. You see, this reminds me of who Jesus is. He is the shepherd, our shepherd. He's willing to die for us. He's willing to kill for us. He's willing to kill the enemy for us. In verse 36, your servant has killed lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. 
for he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Praktisado eh. Again, wherever we are right now is a training ground. Huwag kang manghinawa. Kung gusto mo na umakyat sa corporate ladder, magsipag ka lang. Huwag kang manghinawa. Kung saan maliit na department, just give your best. Magkaroon ka ng magandang work ethics and then God will promote you. Amen? You see, everything is a training ground. Now I understand why since I was in grade school, in high school, I became class president every year. Now I understand because God someday will make me a leader of a church. Because if I didn't went to the leadership process, na yon, no, I became a leader. I was, I was 16, 17, our members like 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. In a fraternity, I became the president. I became a psychological society president in college. Why are these leadership very important? Because these are my training ground. I never understood why I joined the fast food industry, a corporate business, which is so uh, into management. I never understood I was sent by our company to Asian Institute of Management, blah, 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 blah. Because these are my training ground. Because someday, the Lord will make use of me. So, I started out as a preacher, exhorter of in, in our church, doon sa tithes and offering. I started out making PowerPoints for the pastor. I started out bringing the laptop to the... I started out in that area. Because training ground is very important. Humility is very important. Amen? We decided, the pastoral team, we decided to back off. Just work in the background last Sunday because we don't want to take the glory. Because God deserves all the glory. Amen? You see, whenever we are right now, it is your training ground. The majority of your giants are fought and conquered by falling to your knees. Amen? Right? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, Second Corinthians 10, 4. Let's go back to the story. Saul said to David, Go. Na convinced na si King Saul. Go. And may the Lord be with you. Then Saul had his own military clothes put on David. He put a bronze helmet on David's head and had him put an armor. You see, benediction is very important. When Saul said, Go. And may the Lord be with you. He is giving His blessings. Blessings. Speaking of blessings to one another is very important. Instead of making chismes, instead of saying hurtful words, say, God bless you. Because blessing no, will, will set no, uh, uh, a pattern no, towards blessings. Back to the story. David strapped his sword on over the military clothes and tried to walk. Ayun lang. But he was not used to them. I can't walk, sabi niya. I can't walk in this. David said to Saul, I'm not used to them. So David took them off. Tinanggal niya. Sabi niya, oversized ng uniform na to. Mabigat pa sa akin eh. Again, expect discouragement. Di ba? Lalaban ka na lang, binigyan ka na nga ng blessing, Sinuutang ka naman ng kabigat-bigat. Eh, paano naman? Hindi ko nga mabuhat na eh. Papunta kay Goliath eh. So, pa, this is discouraging. Right? In verse 40, instead, he took his staff. This is a staff. Oh, imagine, mas mahaba-haba, staff na yan. Ang staff kasi, may pangkalawit. Kasi ginagamit niya ang pangkalawit sa leeg ng sheep pagka nag-go-go astray. Alright? So, may dala siyang staff. So, hindi totoo yung mga movies, ang dala niya lang, tirador. May dala siyang staff. Okay? May staff at tirador. Tapos, no, he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi. 
Ano yung wadi? Okay? Mamaya, alam natin yung wadi. And put them in the pouch. So, pumulot na siya ng limang smooth stones na ilagay niya doon sa pouch in his shepherd's bag. Parang yung bag ni Pastor, Pastor Greg, right? Then, hindi ko kakayanin yung, hindi ko tatalunin yung mga illustration ni Pastor Greg. Ang lalaki ng mga dala niyang, ano yan, yung uh, sagwan eh, di ba? Then, with his sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. So, with the sling in his hand and a staff, he approached the Philistine. No? Inikuta niya, sabi niya. No? Okay, this is very important. He took five smooth stones. Five smooth stones? Binigyan ka ng spear? Binigyan ka ng kalasan? Eh, dapat lang yun. Nakatapat ng kalaban yun. Puro bronze ang bibigat ng kalaban. Pero why did you take off those armors, those spears, bucket, and choose sm- five smooth stones from the wadi? You see, a wadi is a valley or a oasis, no? Uh, it's a stream bed, no, etc. that is only wet during the wet season. An example of a wadi is a stream that dries up completely during the dry season. Marami nito sa Pilipinas. Wadi. So, dyan siya kumuha ng five smooth stones. You see, hindi kasi core competency ni David using spears and armors. No, His core competency is the five smooth stones. Do siya sanay eh. Kasi, yun yung ginagamit niya sa lions and bears. Right? In the Philippines, and abroad where Pinoy diaspora is evident, almost, no, as I observe, almost but not all, almost every Pinoy church wants to be an English church. I don't know what is our national obsession in speaking in English. No? Bakit? Isn't, why other ethnicity is thriving using their native tongue? Right? We thought that English, if you speak English, you are more intelligent compared to other Filipinos. Diba? Ang Pinoy, pag galit na yan. Pag nag-English na yan, ibig sabihin galit na. Dalawa lang yun. It's either lasing or galit. Here's the problem. We don't preach in Filipino because we want to cater to the non-Pinoys. There's no problem with that. But if they, no common sense, if they really want an English-speaking pastor, they will not go to our church even though we declare that we are an English church. If I'm white, if I'm black, if I'm Latino-American, uh, if I am a Asian American or a person who was born here who doesn't know any other language except English and will go to a church, of course, I will prefer a church that I can understand. So I will go to an English church. That's why all Filipino church says, let's be an English church so that we can cater to them. Here's the thing. Why would I put you to, na- to my number one list? Because your English is only your secondary language. Right? I will go first to the thousands or hundreds of thousands of churches around me here in the U.S. who speaks better English than a Filipino church. Right? I will never go to your church because because you speak English. The reason I am going to your church, why? Because they want to be part of a Pinoy warm, classic, Christian hospitality. Because they want to worship with their wives, they want to worship with their Filipino husbands, they want to worship with their Filipino children, they want to worship their, with their Filipino friends. That is fellowship. Amen? When I came here, this is not LA Filipino First Church of the Nazarene. This is Walk by Faith. Church of the Nazarene. And this was declared as an English church. But that is not our core competency. That's why the board and I, you know, we talked it over and I presented to them an other pathway 
towards to God's calling. This is our five smooth stones. Imagine if we will try our very best to, to invite all the non-Pinoys to come here. Even the English church is having a hard time inviting English-speaking people. What will be our advantage? But if we will focus on our core competency in serving the Filipino ethnicity and be very welcoming to non-Pinoys, like their husbands, wives, children, or friends, no? include them. That's why I, I appreciate the worship team. Even though we sung in a, in a Filipino, there's like a translation in English, right? No, although this is very hard for me because no, I have to speak English in like 90% and you know, put like a subtitle so that you'll be like uh, watching a Korean novella with sub. It's okay. Dahil gusto natin yakapin lahat. We want to include everyone. Amen? So, the problem with Filipino churches, I've been invited to a lot of Filipino churches. We don't sing Filipino worship songs. Why? Pag OPM ba? Pag Kapapuri song? Baduy? Let me remind you, same power and anointing, same aroma of worship that is pleasing to God. Pinoy or Hillsong, both are acceptable to God. Amen? You see, it is not about the language, it is about the heart of the worshiper. We need to understand that concentrating in Filipino ethnicity is our five smooth stones. That is our core competency. That's why we, we proclaim, diba, Simbang Pinoy, hindi alam ni Pastor Greg yung ibig sabihin. It simply says, worship in Filipino. Right? It only means that there's a reason why we are called to be Christians as Filipinos. Pwede naman tayong Christian Russians, Armenians, pero bakit Filipino? May rason. Right? And since uh, it's Filipino-American History Month, I like to uh, 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 greet everyone. A happy Filipino-American History Month. Alam niyo yung history ng unang Pinoy dito na dumating ng 1500s? And you'll know the reason kung bakit sila proud Filipinos. Amen? Let's go back to the story. As we end, the Philistine came closer and closer to David with the shield bearer in front of him. So may tagdara. Imagine mo, laki mo na meron ka pang shield bearer. Imagine mo, ako si Goliath. Meron tao sa harapan, may tagadala na shield. So nagtatago pa siya sa likod ng shield. Si David na lang katapat. Then, 42, when the Philistine looked and saw David, he despised him. Nainis siya. Nainsulto. Because, no? He was just a youth. Bata! Bata, binigay niyo sa akin. 40 days ako nagtatalak dito, sa bata ay bibigay niyo. Pero healthy naman, tsaka handsome. Imagine nyo, kailan pa naging kasalanan maging cute. Di ba? Ay, madalas akong masabihan na bata lang daw ako, pero cute naman. Again, expect discouragement. It's very discouraging for David, right? So he said to David, Am I a dog? That you come against me with sticks? Aso lang ba ako na parang papaluhin mo ng, ng patpat? Then he comes, David. Minura niya si David by his gods. Come here. The Philistine called David. And I'll give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts. Halika, lumapit ka dito, ipapakain kita sa mga ibon at sa mga mababangis na hayop. Yang katawan mong yan, pagkatapos kitang patayin, Papakain kita sa mga ibon. Woo! Expect discouragement. I say it again, life sometimes can be discouraging. Verse 45, David said to the Philistine, You come against me with a sword, spear, and javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord of armies, the God of the ranks of Israel, you have defied him. Mga kapatid, pagka lumapit sa iyo, ang problema, ganun dapat manalangin. Hoy, problema. 
You come against me with sword, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of Army. Wag tayong iiyak lang. Dapat matuto tayo manalangin kagaya ng sinabi ni David, Today, I will hand you over to me. Today, I'll strike you down. Remove your head and give you the corpse on the Philistine camp to the birds of the sky and the wild creatures of the earth. Then all the world will know that the Israel has a God. Hindi niya sinabi na, that the, oh, that the world will know that David is great. Hindi niya sinabi yun. Ang sinabi niya, that the world will know that the God of Israel is alive. Amen? In verse 47, And this whole assembly will know that it's not by sword or by spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's. He will hand you over to us. Patay kang bata ka ngayon. Number seven, He will give you strength. Remember that the battle is the Lord's. Addiction, He will give you strength. Remember that the battle is the Lord. Unwanted relationship, He will give you strength. The battle is the Lord. Max out credit cards, He will give you strength. The battle is the Lord's. Your battle is the Lord's. Let's watch this. He's going from being a kid to being a warrior in that moment. He just bent over and he picked up five smooth stones and these he put in his pouch and he picked up his sling and he walked towards Goliath and Goliath sees him and he goes, what? It was insulting actually to send, well, what are you sending this young unarmed, you know, uh, unprotected? <laughs> a guy against me. The Philistine curses David and vows to feed the Israelites flesh to the birds and the wild animals. Smack talking is one of his fatal mistakes. Never brag in a fight. That is one of the basic rules of fighting. David was listening and saying, okay, this guy's talking trash. And as soon as he makes a move, I want to put him down. And that's exactly what he did. get a, a stone of a quarter pound and a sling can hurl that at a couple of hundred miles an hour. It's like a whip. You know, when you crack a whip, you hear that sound? That's because the tip of the whip is going faster than the speed of sound. It's a sonic boom, it's breaking the sound barrier. That stone can hit with a great degree of speed and a great amount of force. According to the legend, all it takes to fell the giant is one shot. But for Goliath, the worst is yet to come. He kills him with his own sword to add insult to injury. Then goes, finds his family and kills them. You know, David is seen as kind of this writing poetry and playing the flute or something. This guy was a killer. Since the Middle Ages, he's been depicted as, you know, this red beast with horns and pitchfork and hoofs. And... Amen. In verse 48, when the Philistines started forward to attack him, David ran quickly to the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in the bag, took out a stone, slung it, and hit the Philistine on his head, on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down to the ground. Ito po yung Pinoy tirador. <laughs> Hindi yan ang ginamit ni David, ha? Yan yung binibigay ng lolo ko tuwing galing siya ng Bicol. Ang, ang negosyo ng lolo ko sa Ginubatan Albay ay gumagawa siya ng bakya. Alam niyo na, bakya noong araw? So magaling siya maglilok ng bakya. So tuwing uwi siya ng Manila, dinadala niya ako ng tirador. Handmade niya yon. So pamilyar ako sa tirador. Pero ito yung tirador ni David. Slingshot. In verse 50, David defeated the Philistine with a sling and a stone. David overpowered the Philistine and killed him without having a sword. Anong sinisigaw? Pagpabagsak na yung puno. Timber! 
patay. One shot. Remember, may apat pa siyang spares. Kung may lalabas pang apat na giant, sige, lumapit kayo. May apat pa ako dito eh. David ran and stood over him. He grabbed the Philistine's sword, pulled it from its sheath, and used it to kill him. Then he cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, takbuhan na. Right? Grabe, no? Napaka-violent yung pagkaka-describe. O, oh, enjoy nyo ba yung pinapanood nyo? Mas violent ito. Manood na lang kayo ng, ng David and Goliath. Kesa, mas maganda to kesa sa Squid Games. Verse 52. The men of Israel and Judah rallied, shouting their battle cry and chased the Philistines to the entrance of the valley and the gates of Ekron. Philistine bodies were strewn all along the Sharim road to Gath and Ekron. Buwa na! Patay na si Goliath! Ano pang ginagawa natin dito? Bata lang ang pumatay. Next na tayo dyan, takbuhan na. When the Israelites returned from the pursuit of the Philistines, they plundered their camps, kinuha nila yung mga gamit. And David took Goliath, Goliath's head, and brought it to Jerusalem. No? But he put Goliath's weapons in his own tent. Ah, may souvenir. See, every giant will fall, provided we keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Amen? Every problems will fall, provided we keep our eyes focused on Jesus and remain faithful to the calling with which God has called us, thus not losing focus of the end goal. Last, learning to ponder. We are victors in Christ. Amen? You see, sabi mo sa katabi mo, stop being a victim. Start being a victor. Pwede naman mag-play victim si David eh. Ang <laughs> laki niyan eh. Hindi ko kaya yan eh. Ayoko yan. Pwede naman mag-play victim eh. Pero ba? Hinarap niya. When faced with a problem, kunin mo yung staff mo. Kunin mo yung core competency mo. Kunin mo yung five body stones mo. Kunin mo yung slingshots mo. Kirahin mo yung problema. Ipanalangin mo sa Diyos. Iluhod mo. At let the Lord show you who really God is. Amen? We are victors in Christ. Remember, hindi ka ginawa ng Diyos. In fact, meron siyang pangako, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. Amen? Jeremiah 29, 11, verse 55, as we end, when Saul had seen David going out to confront the Philistine, he asked Abner, the commander of the army, whose son is this youth, Abner? Kanino nga ba itong anak? Alam niyo, sa probinsya, pag may bata, ang unang tanong agad, kasi sa probinsya, magkakamag-anak, magkakilala sa isang baryo. Pag may ginawa yung bata, pangit man o maganda, ba, magaling sa basketball, kanino nga bang anak yan? O kaya, yung bata na paaway, kanino nga bang anak yan? They always identify it who the father is. Your majesty, sabi ni Abner, as surely as you live, I don't know. <laughs> Hindi ko sa kilala eh. Never heard yung batang yan eh. Never heard? Ba't ganun? Never heard. Buti na lang. The king said, find out whose son this young man is. Kasi yung tatay niya, exempted na sa tax mo lang ngayon. Right? When David returned from the killing, no, from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the Philistine's head still in his hand. Hawak-hawak niya. Understand, nobody goes through life facing only one giant. Because the next giant David will face is King Saul. King Saul who loves him dearly, who took him in as a son, but eventually Saul realized he is the next anointed king. I need to kill this kid. So nobody goes through life facing one giant. After God will kill your Goliath, whatever you're facing through right now, expect another more. And there will be another more. And there will be another more. Teka, ba't ito ganun eh? Naging Christian ako, kaya nga ako tumunta din sa church na ito para mawala ang problema ko. I'm sorry to say, that's not the real thing. You will still face problems in life. Amen? But the good thing now is that you have a defender and you can still be victory, a victor in Christ. You see, the minute you take one giant out, the rest of them will hunt you down. 
In verse 58, Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? The son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. And so, no, with humility naman, naman, naman. Pwede naman sagutin. Ako lang naman po si David, ang papalit sa inyo. Tanungin niyo si, Kings, uh, tanungin niyo si Propetang Samuel. Yung prophet niyo, tanungin niyo. Kasi ako yung inanoy niyo. Hindi, hindi ganun kayabang eh. Sabi niya, I'm the son of your servant, Jesse, of Bethlehem. Importante na binanggit yung Bethlehem kasi that be the birthplace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, David stood there declaring his DNA. Right? His DNA of a future king. Question, what are your giants now? I don't know. Pero ikaw alam mo. You know what are your giants right now. But again, no, I encourage you to face your giants. Probably you're fearful, it's okay. But do not, magka stay sa, sa, fear, sa fear stage because ang fear stage will paralyze you. Magstay ka sa Panginoon. Some of the giants we face every day, pride, selfishness, greed, addiction, whatever it is you're experiencing right now, I want you to come to God. You see, there was this song, I always sing my son when he was young, no, uh, when we were watching VeggieTales. Kasi matatakotin yun sa mga multo eh. No, I will always sing to him, remember the song in Veg- Ve- VeggieTale? God is bigger than the boogeyman, is bigger than the Godzilla monsters on TV. Oh, God is bigger than the boogeyman and is watching out for you and me. This was just, you know, a children's song. I always sing this song to myself because you always fear yung mga nakakatakot na movies. And this is like a song of assurance. But this song ministered to me. A children's song. God reminded me that I am bigger. Whatever problem you're facing, I'm bigger than Goliath or Godzilla or any monsters that you can think of. Because I am your God. And I am faithful watching you. Watching over you. You see, nobody else can save you. You need to trust Jesus. Enable for you to face those problems. Trust Jesus today. Paano, Pastor? Admit you're a sinner. Admit it. Repent to God. Be clean. Go to God. Ask Him to cleanse you, to make you whiter than the snow. Be willing to turn from sin. Believe that Jesus died for you, buried and rose from the dead, and invite Jesus into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. To all the people who are here in this church, I'd like to invite you to please uh, bow our heads and close our eyes as we pray. To those people who are watching over sa Facebook and YouTube, I encourage you, you want to face all your giants in life? Admit you're a sinner. Be willing to turn from your sins. Invite Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. Dear Jesus, Thank you, Lord, for being the King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, for you are bigger than our Goliaths. Thank you, for the battle is not ours, but the battle is yours. Thank you, for before uh, we are in the stage of fear, but you are the fear extinguisher. And you will make us not victims, but victors. Dear God, I am a sinner. I need forgiveness. I believe that Jesus shed His precious blood and died for my sins. And I'm willing to turn from sin. And I now invite you to come into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen.